I went to school, and the uh, teacher, it was like fourth grade maybe, and the teacher asked if we had anybody in the war. So uh, I went home and told my dad about this, and he said, well, you did. You had an aunt, my sister, who was very brave. But I couldn't wait to go to school and say, I had an aunt that was in the war. And one boy, I, I vaguely remember his name. I think I choose to forget it. He said, she doesn't count. She's a girl. And that just wasn't right. I mean, you know, how, how many times can you be told you can't do something because you're a girl? So uh, that got me probably interested, but I, I must have buried it because I did nothing about it until I was uh, quite a bit older, had seen a lot and um, read a lot, mostly read a lot. I just became very curious about her. That why did she die? Why is she buried overseas? What's, what's the story? Helen Fairchild went out to northern France and then up the line from a base hospital in France to Flanders as part of a large US base hospital, um, base hospital number 10. So she went out to the Western Front as part of this unit and she was regarded as one of the most competent nurses and that was why she was sent to the front lines. She was also in a, a very dangerous place that they called at the time the zone of the armies. You know, within that region, within about eight miles of the lines, where women were not usually allowed to go. Small units from that base hospital would be sent out to the casualty clearing stations, much closer to the front lines. So in Helen's case, she was sent out as part of a team of four, a surgeon, a nurse, an anaesthetist and an orderly, and she was the nurse within that unit. And these four people would travel together to the casualty clearing station. In her case, casualty clearing station number four at Dozingham, near the village of West Fletteren. They would travel together and they would stay together as a group, as a team, and do surgical work within that casualty clearing station. And Helen, she was in poor health, although she didn't know it at the time, she had a stomach ulcer, a very severe stomach ulcer. It was after she went up the lines to Belgium, to Flanders, to casualty clearing station number four, that she became iller. And um, in August 1917, she was at the hospital when it was very severely bombarded and shelled, not just with shrapnel shells, but with gas shells as well. She was also caring for patients who were being brought in with mustard gas on their uniforms, and she was one of the nurses who were stripping these uniforms from the soldiers and caring for the soldiers. So as a result of her exposure to these toxic chemicals, particularly to the mustard gas, her stomach also worsened, and in the middle of August, she had to be taken back to the base. Just before Christmas, she became so ill that she had to go off duty again. And in January, uh, it was decided that you know, she needed surgery. She asked one of her colleagues, Charles Mitchell, to perform the surgery and to remove this ulcer from her stomach. And she died three days later. She died on the 18th of January, 1918. The chaplain at the hospital said that she died as a result of her work at the front. So her family, her niece, Nell Rote, in particular, has been campaigning ever since to have her remembered you know, as somebody who died as a result of her active service, as a result of her nursing work during the war. Helen became important to me when I was just little and I would climb up in the attic, open up this big trunk that was addressed to my grandfather, and um, I read her letters. When you read her letters in the archive, the letters she sent home, many of them to her mother, 
Some of them to her brother, Ned, who was 25, so grown up when she went out there. But many to also to her teenage sister, Christine, who was 14 at the time. What's fascinating about these letters is that none of this difficulty or danger, and indeed, especially none of this clinical work, this professional work, ever comes through really in the letters. You only get hints here and there that she's not entirely happy. We went to Dozingham Cemetery first. That's where the casualty clearing station was. That's where she was under bombardment. And that's what affected me most. I felt very close to her there. And then, a couple days later, we went to the Psalm Cemetery. Uh, one incident that I do remember is my daughter was holding her camera to her face, and I laid a, a card down with pictures of sour cherries. It was a, a greeting card that my daughter had made, Susan had made, and I, I had written inside, you said that you missed the cherries from home. I bring you cherries. And I looked up, and I never saw such big tears in my life running down my daughter's face. <laughs> so I cried too. Luke Inyon, who grew up on that farmland, he said, since I was coming over, we should have some kind of monument for Helen. I don't know why I didn't notice this, this tall thing covered in a black curtain. And then when he was finished speaking, he asked me to come up and we pulled this black curtain off and there was this plaque. It is the most beautiful plaque, um, not in the cemetery. The War Graves Commission would not allow them to put this plaque to a nurse inside the cemetery. So for since 2010 until this year, it was just sitting along the road, which I think is very touching in itself. She's outside the gate, you know. Come to think of it, she didn't qualify to be included inside the fence. <laughs> she definitely was one of the very first nurses to die, possibly the first one to die overseas. A lot of people don't attach any importance to that. I don't know if they give medals for suffering. I don't know. Helen's niece, Nell, would really like her to be awarded a Purple Heart because Nell and the rest of her family believe that Helen died. It's, it's been stated by the chaplain that she died as a result of her work at the front. She was injured, whether that injury was due to a worsening, the mustard gas worsening her stomach ulcer. They believe, and Nell in particular believes, that she died because of her work at the front. She was injured on the front lines, and therefore she should be awarded a Purple Heart. I would like people to realize how hard nurses in general work. I've seen it firsthand myself, and which makes me so glad that I had the opportunity to write about one. But she's one of so many. And it is bringing recognition to other nurses. And uh, that's the greatest reward. I mean, it's not just her. It's not just about her. It's, it's bigger than that. And so, well, there again, any reward that she would get, like a medal, would reflect on all nurses. I think all nurses would rejoice, because they don't give that many medals to nurses. <laughs>